now I want to go to the everybody, and uh, I appreciate all you, uh, all of you who uh, uh, went through this. Let, let's go now and uh, put back to my uh, regular audio through Surface Doc. I can hear you better. And now, any one of you who has a sound, uh, you're welcome you? to ask the question. Can you? Of course, as usual, I am uh, ambitious. Yadranka, I can't hear you. Okay, you have to. I want to thank you for the presentation. I don't have a particular question at this time. I'll let the experts ask you. I, I'm kind of retired from the field, but I enjoy hearing the novelties. Okay, I didn't even, uh, thanks for a uh, compliment. Uh, by the way, uh, Yadranka is, uh, uh, she was my classmate, classmate at uh, Belgrade University, and she was in the so-called telecommunication weak currents, and I was in uh, nuclear sciences department, which was uh, uh, supposed to uh, uh, take care of the nuclear reactors, and we switched the fields. She went uh, and went to Canada at the time before me, a couple of years, and then uh, uh, finished the whole career uh, there building the nuclear reactors in Canada. And I left that and I never worked with that. I, I went into uh, strong currents, which was uh, not supposed to be my field, but when I came to United States, I was in control systems and then uh, started liking this uh, this field and, uh, and still stay in it. All, all I can say is, um, you know, if anything is, I didn't have a chance to uh, make a concluding remarks because time went by quickly and we are uh, saying this. But one thing, uh, as I showed uh, now today, uh, there is uh, many ways to uh, make a transformer happen. And now we have what Tesla and Faraday didn't have. They only had a, a drive. Either this is a source for Faraday or alternating voltage that uh, Faraday and uh, the Tesla put in use. But we have now ability with the switches, capacitors, inductors to make transformer on any kind that we want. And I just show, show you one. My first step five years ago was to make this hybrid transformer. Now I have three prongs of direction which I want to take my research. You know, not research, but actually applying for uh, now. Uh, patents and uh, making a prototype. One direction is really to make a high voltage DC conversion, but inherently high voltage. Why is it uh, uh, important now? Because at, at the time of Tesla, he only had uh, uh, Niagara Falls as a natural source of uh, mechanical energy. And he used the big uh, three-phase generators at 60 hertz to convert it to uh, uh, AC voltage and use a transformer with a two-phase and three-phase to, to convert it to high voltage. And then that requires also, uh, that required operating his uh, uh, three-phase motors. However, now we have one big advantage of a Tesla that he didn't have a time, and that is we have these to DC converters, which uh, naturally use as a source, not mechanical power to convert to electrical power, uses solar power, and solar power is made uh, really at uh, two volt solar cells. Now they are putting a large number of solar cells in series to get uh, to 200 volts or uh, 220 volts. That's bad because if any single solar cell is not illuminated, then the whole uh, power is not uh, generated. It's better to use all solar cells at two volts in parallel. But for that, you need a high voltage conversion. You need to convert it to 200 volts, two volts, lots of solar cells in parallel, you convert it to 220 volts, but then, uh, or 400 volts DC. Then you need another DC to DC converter, which will convert it for 400 volts to 4,000 volts, and hopefully for eventually to 40,000 volts. And why? That because if I can make now transformer, which is fully a thousand times smaller uh, at 50 kilohertz than at 50, 50 hertz, then I everything, you see the, the thing is, everything then becomes not only smaller, but more efficient. Because if you, instead of 60 hertz generator and transformer, 60 hertz, which have a huge cross sections, 
and huge lengths of the wire, everything is now shrunk by factor of 500 or 1,000. Okay, I'm shooting for 100, okay? <laughs> and if I get 1,000, <laughs> I'll accept it, all right? But uh, that's one direction that I'm moving. The other direction, it is also the beautiful invention that one of very few that uh, Japanese uh, contributed uh, back in 2014 when I had my air, my uh, uh, Chu converter family put on Orion aircraft. At that time, people in Japan invented the blue LED. And the blue LED was the only one which was missing. Green and, uh, and uh, red were already available using silicon, but he used the gallium nitride and make a beautiful uh, blue LED, which now combined with the other, you can make a, a LED white light, okay? And what is the advantage of LED white light? It is very, very small and very efficient. You know, I am using here <laughs> the 30 watt uh, um, uh, LED with 100 of LEDs, and it is actually like 300 watt light bulb, you know? And, and, and it's much less uh, electricity. The only problem is in order to drive them because their LEDs are like a silicon solar cells, you know, they need to drive them in low voltage and high current. And uh, that's uh, again, one problem which can be solved now uh, because right now you uh, converter, which goes from 400 volts to drive this uh, low voltage LEDs, it becomes big, huge, even with the high frequencies. So one problem I want to solve now is to have LED drives is as small as uh, as uh, LEDs and not 10 times or 100 times bigger. That's the second area. And the third, I just showed you the microprocessor drive. It's just so insane that after 30 years, I told them uh, what's wrong with them, you know, going to at that time at 33 years ago, I gave a presentation at a conference and they were doing the uh, 10, claiming to do uh, 10 megahertz converter Bell Lab and um, Virginia Polytechnic. I says, you're insane. You know, I'm now at 500 kilohertz doing design for Boeing and my next design will be 50 kilohertz. And that's exactly what I did. So I think uh, the, uh, and now I have even better mousetrap for a one volt, uh, um, for, uh, that's uh, 40, 58, 40 volts. Everybody wants to use 50 volt bus to drive one volt drive for microprocessor. Now, I don't need a couple inductor or a true converter. I can do it in single converter and have a zero ripple on the output and all the advantages that I showed you in this uh, hybrid switching converter. And I can have isolated version which can go for 400 volt. And that beauty of that is now you can go directly from 400 volt down to one volt because they need uh, eight or 12 processors and each processor, you know, so really you want to have a processor right at the point where you're driving it, but then distribution current at 400 volts will be so much smaller. So you can put all this processor exactly when the microprocessor is needed. But you know what? The people in uh, uh, Intel's and Bro Broadcom's and all this, uh, shall I say, uh, not Broadcom, but uh, uh, Qualcomm and all others, they're all in IC design and all these think that they're gonna make it by using IC circuits, you know? So, so they don't understand the power conversion. Uh, that's my, uh, I say, uh, bad uh, bad luck. That uh, that uh, uh, I'm everybody's enemy. You know, maybe my conclusion is this. You know, uh, when I show up at the conferences, they don't want to uh, let me speak. They shut off my microphone because I'm I'm telling them the truth. You know, <laughs> then they publish the paper. You know what is a what is a, a latest? This is. A, uh, this is something which I really think is disaster, you know, not only that we have disaster and I'll be honest with my field, uh, the question I will answer you uh, myself, I pose a question. I was invited to patent office two years ago and it was just happened to be uh, on July 10 when Tesla was born. So. I decided to give a free presentation and pay for my trip just to honor Tesla's birthday, you know, that day. So I gave that presentation and learned all about the patent office. And you know what is the situation with the patent office? It was established, Declaration of Independence, 1.7 paragraph, established uh, that uh, all, uh, uh, how you say, all uh, uh, experts in uh, uh, skilled, in all skilled in the arts, and science, arts and science. And they gave a copyright for 20 years, which was extended to 50 years and later to 100 uh, now. And uh, at that time, they established a patent law. They gave exclusive rights to inventor for exclusive use uh, 
of its, his invention for uh, 17 years in return that after that it becomes public property. So they say, don't keep it for yourself, tell everybody. And you know what was, who was the first patent officer uh, in charge, we'll say commissioner of the patent office? Guess what? Anybody has a guess? Yadanka, you have a guess? No, not really. <laughs> George Washington. Oh, wow. George Washington was the first. That's politicized, first right? Patent, first patent commissioner, and the first patent was issued two days, uh, two years later, like 1790. Uh, was the first patent issued. And what, why make a point about patent, a patent system? Patent system was a, a supposed to encourage the people to contribute and then leave it to the rest of the world. And now it is uh, uh, opposite. Now, uh, uh, patent office is worth nothing because it's an invitation to the lawsuit. All the big companies are going to, uh, if you have something very important, they're going to try to uh, publish and happen to me uh, with Infineon. And I had a license to them for five years exclusively and the six years after I canceled the exclusivity, it did not do nothing. Then, uh, then they filed the patent and had a patent issued. Of course, it's useless as far as I'm concerned, but, uh, but that's how it works. And uh, uh, the un opposite thing is companies which don't produce anything, they got a uh, uh, monopoly. Patent was supposed to be the only legal monopoly uh, that should have been existed. But now it is not. It's just an uh, invitation to lawsuit. And then the only monopolies are in the Facebook, on the uh, media, in, and they control elections in a way. Twitter control elections. Uh, then you have uh, Amazon, which controls uh, sales. And they are supposedly a low cost, uh, uh, but they are not. You find out most of the stuff you can find out 30, 40% cheaper than anything else. The only advantage is uh, it delivers to my door. So I don't have to go in this pandemic to order it. And uh, Google. So you have Google, Apple in its own way. It's uh, uh, And the problem is the whole field of power electronics. I just tell you uh, my honest opinion. Uh, it is flooded, flooded with information and no critical uh, assessment. Uh, last conference in uh, uh, so-called energy uh, ECCE uh, elect um, electronics uh, uh, car, uh, conversion uh, conference expo, which used to be original conference power electronics specialist called, and they for some reason three years ago changed it to this name. They did the online conference in October. You know how many papers they were presented there? 1,000 papers. Wow. And that's 1,000 paper, just one conference in one field. And Paolo, uh, IEEE Society, IEEE has uh, 39 different societies, and 12 of them are de uh, dealing with power electronics, energy conversion, you know, renewables, whatever you name it, transportation, and so on. And just one conference has uh, 1,000 papers, you know. And you know why? Because now uh, they are, how you say, uh, they are operating, they, there is no, when I started in this field, those people who are in the field, they're also those who are in charge of auto, approving the papers. Now everything is approved and this is, uh, everything gets uh, published and nothing gets, uh, gets to be criticized. So there is no inherent, uh, uh, how you say, criticism to stop this flood of information. And I can uh, tell you, you know, I was, a, <laughs> at a conference, you know, in, uh, um, let's say, 2007 in APEC. Well, it was the la last one that was in, in person was 2019. It was my backyard in uh, Santa Ana. And I got up because one guy who had nothing to say about it, he was uh, self-appointing himself to talk about research at power electronics at universities worldwide. There are more than 100 or so people, uh, universities, each one has two or three people. He had no credentials, you know, and I know him from the digital uh, equipment when I was making presentation uh, 40 years ago and so on. Anyway, he made a presentation <laughs> and you know, you won't believe it. You know, I got up to criticize it. And uh, after, I, after I just started explaining what it is, a uh, conference uh, concocted with him. And as he was talking, he gave a sign like this and uh, <laughs> He cut off microphone that I was talking, a <laughs> uh, uh, stand-up microphone. I had recorded everything because I expected to, that they're going to do that. 
and uh, uh, you know the whole thing was uh, he was then after they're talking over me for next 10 minutes not uh, letting me uh, ask the question and thousand people are watching that don't mean anything and when I was in uh, 1988 in a conference in San Diego when I made uh, this statement that this nonsense going to the 10 megahertz and I do it at 50 kilohertz and 18 people AT&T Bell Lab uh, Virginia Polytechnic, all is, uh, they, 18 people signed up to uh, shut me down that I don't know what I'm talking about. And I answered every single one. And wow. here I found, I found myself in front of a thousand people. Bunch of them are my former uh, students, professor, university, nobody to get up and to say, hey, let's stop it. Let's have a discussion, you know. And you know why it is that way? Because the IEEE is... Uh, defunct organization. They have uh, uh, 500,000 people, half a million worldwide. There's so many societies, each one paying two to three hundred dollars membership. I'm a lifetime and fellow member, so I don't pay uh, much for that. And I get this proceeding. I get proceedings of power electronics uh, transactions, 1,200 pages every month. And how they're built? They're built on uh, volunteers, you know, so-called volunteers. And volunteers are there. Why? Because they go to these conferences, and as a conference charges 1,500 for a four-day conference, they also charge one day 20 different seminars, three hours each. And what they're used to? They're just a bull bullprint for people to advertise themselves. You know what I'm saying? They don't offer any education and all offer, you know, and in fact, right now, you know. Uh, IEEE charges for their webinars. I, I offer this as a free education to uh, to everybody in the world. Now they can join. Uh, they charge up to hundred dollars for their webinars. You know, <laughs> which is one hour and which is really promotion for this uh, consultant and so on. The the field is totally a uh, disaster. You know, and something uh, I'm hoping to uh, do this. Uh, by doing just this uh, course, uh, uh, these webinars, and doing an online course, which now this situation is education is horrible. I know I, I paid for my daughters uh, at Princeton Electrical Engineering at that time $35,000 20 years ago for room and board. Now it is seventy to $90,000, you know. Yeah. And you know, the problem is most of these universities now have a 100 universities in the United States all have two or three professors in power electronics, and the output is just, uh, you know, anything. They, they justify it because publishing uh, is easy. You know, they just get everything is accepted, everything is published, and the problem is, it's, it's, uh, uh, how do I say, uh, no, uh, still, they charge $60,000 for four years, and I think now we are in, uh, living in different society. Now we have all this uh, ability to uh, uh, we have all this ability to give lectures. Can you imagine now how powerful it is now that when I set up this course for uh, six weeks, two hours every day, I intentionally made it only two hours per day because you eight to 10 in the morning, it is five to seven in the evening in Europe. It is uh, noontime, uh, lunchtime in South America. It's seven to eight o'clock in India. Uh, I have a, uh, on this uh, conference lecture, I have one fellow, my uh, uh, really fan, uh, uh, Nathan uh, uh, from uh, New Zealand. Uh, unfortunately, from New Zealand, Australia, he has to get up at five in the morning to, <laughs> to, to listen to my presentation. Okay. So, yeah, here is Nathan. Nathan, say something. Can you say something? I, yeah, I'm here. Um, okay. Actually, um... about everybody. Okay. Here's another. So, did you learn anything new today that you didn't learn from last uh, online course or what? Um, you always uh, learn something new um, every time. Okay. Yes. All right. That's why that's why I have you every time. Okay. Uh, one day you're going to be my assistant. Uh, you know. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, well, the younger people may replace us. <laughs> That's that's what I'm uh, that's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping now to uh, use this, and uh, and I have too many things on my plate. And one thing I uh, want to say is, uh, uh, yeah, I'd love to do these lectures to 
Uh, I didn't sell, uh, say it at the beginning, but when I give in-person lectures, I was always, my enthusiasm of teaching was proportional to number of, not a proportional, exponentially proportional to number of attendees. So now I, I'm extremely happy if I get 500 people on my lecture. That right. means my word goes out. I just need more time. As you can see today, I have so many things I can cover it. That's one thing. But I have two other ob objectives. You know, unfortunately, uh, you know, I didn't mention that, but uh, uh, I, I want to make a, just recently, I was just for a second week, celebrating now 200 years that we took after 2000 years that we know for magnetism and in uh, 2010 years, 200 years ago, or a little bit more, we st established a battery. And now 200 years ago, we established connection, electricity and magnetism, and you have a four giants. You had a, a Faraday, Tesla, Maxwell, and Pupin, uh, which con uh, changed, changed the world of uh, Whirling. Only 200 years. And I looked at perspective, how much is that? In I just came across, you know what, Kirk Douglas. He yeah. was very famous, of course, uh, originally from Russia, uh, actor. He died last year at age 103. Actually, he was months off of 104 years. And his wife, second wife, is 101 years and still living. So what I'm thinking in that perspective, you yeah. need two human, you need two more than average human being, and that's your 200 years. You know what right. I'm saying? <laughs> right. How much How much happened in these 200 <laughs> years, right? Now, of course, I'm, I'm counting with my age, which I don't want to disclose. I always look 20 years younger than I, than I look, at least according to my daughters, and Yadranka will confirm, right? You know, so, <laughs> so that, that uh, but I'm still counting that all what is in my head, I need at least 20 years. So God gives me 20 years, and I need the time to uh, turn this uh, titanic ship, uh, ship of the power electronics, which is going into the, how you say, into this uh, iceberg and get destroyed itself. I need to turn it around before it gets destroyed. So that's why I need to do these courses. I need to write my textbook because this there is... Believe it or not, after 50 years, the only textbook I would recommend, you know, I published all the papers that uh, originally published at Caltech with my uh, PhD student from 1981 to 1983, which was uh, now four volumes. And actually 1976, including my PhD thesis. So it's a four volume book. And uh, I encourage you to buy those because uh, that is the first thing you need to uh, do to learn that so you can follow what I'm doing now. And the next thing is I'm developing this, uh, I call it, uh, I hope, uh, I hope I'll be lucky like a Tesla. <laughs> you know, he, he, in 1982, in 1882, he developed uh, this complete revolutionary alternating system and transition distribution generation and by, finished it by 1895, now 13 years later. I hope uh, with all the stuff that I have, maybe I can finish my stuff in 20 years, okay? And then I often uh, like to compare that and say, and tell, share it with my daughter, I want to leave it to uh, the, uh, this world which does not deserve it. Because when I look at the disaster which is happening, <laughs> I'm worried about my kids, <laughs> you know what, how they are going to live in the next uh, 30, 50 years, okay? But uh, I think, uh, I hope to really uh, make a difference. And I hope that uh, uh, a lot of uh, young people will join and realize uh, that uh, good from a bad, you know, that's what they need to do. Yes. Uh, the other thing is nowadays about universities teaching, they are too expensive, too often too little. And I always claim it was not important what university Top university, Princeton, Stanford, uh, Harvard, uh, Caltech, and so on. You work. It is who you learn from, okay? And that is really the, the important things. If you have a right teacher, you can learn a lot. By the way, drunk I remember now is <laughs> this uh, you are related. I I was brought up at Cal uh, uh, at, uh, electrical engineering at. Uh, Belgrade and my generation was blessed. We had a, a professor who was fantastic. 
uh, he was teaching electromagnetics. Remember Surutka? He was a number one at the time, and he was a member of Academy of Serbian Yugoslav Science at that time. Very few were member. In fact, out of all the people, then after that, his student, next student was uh, uh, Branko Popovic, uh, and uh, he was uh, also uh, Academy of Sciences, wrote fantastic book and did the research. Then he got a student, uh, Antonie, who also became a uh, uh, member of Academy of Sciences, also teaching electromagnetics. So we have a strong theory. Unfortunately, when I was at the Berger University for four years, I was in control system and I didn't do electromagnetics. But uh, uh, ever since that time, I started loving you. And Yadranka is uh, married to a brother of Branko Popovic. So anyway, you have a big, big... Uh, you should mention Zoya Popovich, the professor in Denver. Okay, I, I did. I did. Not that, but I'm, glad that, Colorado. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because it gives me an opportunity for another pitch to make. I was a, a responsible to bring Zoya Popovich to Caltech. I was a, a, in a charge of the, I was in charge for a number of years, member of admissions committee for graduate students. And, uh, when she came uh, to Caltech, I already became uh, uh, chairman of three uh, uh, committee members. There were two other members. I was uh, before that for many years committee and then become chairman. When she came, she was picked up and she was actually that year uh, on a PhD uh, oral exam. She or actually, how do you say, entrance exam, the best uh, and so on. And then the people after that, they started seeing a lot of people coming from Berger University. And, and they didn't blame me. And they said, oh, I know why we get these people from Serbia and from Berger University, because you are um, chairman of a committee. Except <laughs> after a couple of years, uh, there was Zoya. And then after that, uh, same year, there was, uh, um, I think, a uh, uh, year later, there was, uh, what is his name? Uh, I forgot. Uh, he was also uh, no, Maxa, but before my, uh, one year before Maxa came, came uh, the fellow who was, uh, you know, boyfriend of someone there, you know, like, uh, you know him in the name. Anyway, all three of them were at the exam with the three PhD prospective students, and we ranked them, they were all at the very top. And, uh, but now, uh, after that, some of the professors uh, started coming to me and says, why don't you give me some more of your students from Belgrade University? You know, because because they showed up so well, so they changed the tune that I wasn't the, because they knew I wasn't uh, doing that. Uh, the, I was doing favor to your university because I knew the professor who made the recommendation. So if this guy says he walks on the water, he does walk on the water. Okay, <laughs> they were best in the generation. So I was, uh, I was, and I actually I was uh, on a both committee. I was on a committee which was uh, accepting new student and we had uh, acceptance rates of uh, 20 percent we had to offer five times more a position if we had a 30 position in uh, in uh, electrical engineering uh, we would offer uh, uh, 200 because we were competing with a uh, harvard mit stanford princeton etc and the people will apply to all of them and only uh, 20 percent will decide to come to caltech you know eventually so so i was uh, really in admissions committee and then i was in a phd committee of these people when they came to the phd oral exam i wanted to see how i well did in picking up these people and I must say, I did very well, okay? All these that I picked up, they came up uh, really top. They became professor. I think Zoya Popovich is uh, for long term, a uh, tenured professor at Boulder, right? And uh, yeah. and uh, related somewhat uh, to this and Her sister is at McGill. Yeah, what? also professor at McGill. But this is becoming a little personal. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's okay. That's, uh, that's what it is. I. I I wish if anybody who uh, was here or these 50 uh, people remaining, if uh, they uh, come forward and remember uh, of any way that uh, they were, where we, cross, uh, where we crossed the roads. Okay. Yeah, sure. cross. Yes. Oh, here's Harvard. What can I do? I'm putting the Harvard down. I'm sorry. You know, no, so. no, no. Okay. I'll, 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 I'll squide it. Uh, Dr. Chuk, I have a question and suggestion. Yes. Uh, I read about uh, all of your patents and everything, and uh, I recently encountered a big problem 
Uh, my uh, application for a U.S. patent was rejected. And the interesting part is that the rejection documents that the reviewer have submitted, it's really alluding to other patents, which has nothing to do with what I have in my patent application. And the bottom line is the reviewer of the patent says basically that I'm making it too simple. It is hard to believe that uh, nobody else have thought of it. It's, it's a common sense. So I remember you on the interview uh, recently um, in California, you mentioned that you had a similar problem when you originally applied for your patent because uh, as I understand it was rejected, it was too simple. Okay, I think a, a little bit different, uh, uh, yes. Uh, indirectly, uh, you are true in a sense. When I uh, when I published my uh, true converter, uh, I uh, wrote the paper, and uh, I, I now make a public admissions. I am really not electrical engineer. I am a mathematician and, and, and hard. Okay, and in high school, I got all my first prizes in math and physics. And uh, why? Because I always liked the uh, logical thinking, and the patent system is made. Uh, uh, in the wrong way. Right. The patent system is based on a thing which says, oh, I woke up in the morning and this is why I waited. I don't know uh, why and how I came to it, but uh, this is it and this is I presented it. So you're supposed to, uh, uh, in the patent presentation, you're supposed to make it. You don't really quite understand how it works, but hey, I connect it this way, it works, and you don't even have to show the prototype anymore. <laughs> That's how it is. And, and uh, when I wrote my paper, I had a, a Caltech appointed uh, uh, patent attorney, and I wrote this, and then just, to, you know, we submitted that uh, in the last minute, because I already had a, pa a, patent, pa a paper to be published. And if a paper is going to be published, you can't uh, patent it. You have to uh, only publish it after that. Uh, uh, okay. And he stopped me in the tracks because in my paper, I wrote the same way I wrote the paper, I wrote the pattern. I went to basic principle and showed a, a logical step-by-step -step how I invented the true converter. <laughs> you know what the, the pattern attorney said? You can't do that because if it shows step-by-step -step how you came to this and so on, then it's not patentable. It's supposed to be uh, uh, something you cooked up and you don't know why it works. And here I showed the uh, logical steps from one step to another and so on. And, and then he said, uh, no, we can't do that. And we had to rewrite the patent, not for me explaining it, even though I was telling it, that was the reason uh, once I can explain it, then I can make a new invention based on a logic that I presented. No, they don't want that. They want to be something like a dark uh, weather uh, thing that you wave and so on. I had even, I have another uh, uh, things uh, which, I, I, since you mentioned that my favorite subject, obviously, patent, I had a, a Dragan Maksimovich, one of my PhD students, and he also, I finished in two years and uh, asked him, but he finished it a little bit more than two years on my in system. And uh, I gave him a, a problem uh, way back uh, then, when he came, he was my 21st PhD student out of 36. Uh, I gave him a problem, which I gave to my first PhD student, Bob Erickson, and he didn't do the job right. And I told him, look, you can use my state space averaging, and all you need to do is uh, make all possible connection of components and then uh, inductors, capacitor switches, and not even transformer, just inductor capacitor to invent uh, things. And, uh, and then use my state space averaging to see if there is a steady state. If it doesn't have a steady state, that converter doesn't exist, you know, like a variable. And he, co he concocted uh, a very uh, intelligent uh, scheme because he had a background from Berger University on graphic theory, graph theory and other. He concocted a system that he said, how are you going to enumerate all these different connections? And he, you know how many uh, connections you could make with the two inductors, uh, one capacitor inside converter and one capacitor outside, like uh, like my true converter, right? He could make uh, 1 million and 50 different connections. 1 million, okay. And then out of this one million, steady state, uh, when you do state, state space equation on my system, 
only 50, 30 or so had uh, uh, been uh, uh, valid converters, okay? And one of them was my true converter, but it was invented after the fact, you know, in, in using this system. So we, at one point, and I, I'm telling you this is because I'm a, a proponent of this uh, uh, human intelligence is much better than artificial intelligence, okay? Yeah. So at one point I, I thought, and all my, all my uh, PhD students at the time, first, there were two different things. When I invented my true converter, coupled inductor, integral magnetics, isolated converter, all the students who were uh, uh, become after me, uh, PhD student at Caltech, they went to complain to Professor Middlebrook, who was uh, uh, together with me leading this group. He says, no, he, he didn't leave anything for us. <laughs> you know, I said, don't worry, you know, there's so much left. You know, And uh, the thing is, uh, at that time, my other students, when Dragon came as a 21st PhD student, we were at a conference in Florida, and my students said, okay, Dragon finally put a nail in a, in a coffin of converter topologies. There is no more converters to be made. Okay, <laughs> not so, not so, because after that, I found out that what we are doing wrong, and we didn't, you know, at one point I was saying, maybe you should patent this uh, as a method, and then in but it turned out that method did result in some new converters with one transistor and three diodes. But that converter was much worse than the one with the two transistors and two diodes. Wow. Much bigger stresses and so on. So the point is, the point I'm saying, there is no substitute to human uh, mind. Uh, and only after so many years in this field, I feel like I'm, I'm like a Mount Everest and I'm looking down and I see everything and, and nobody sees what I see. <laughs> and then I'm, I'm sort of uh, surprised. So well, it's obvious to me now, but of course, when I was 25 years old, I would come up with something and uh, in night and dream and in the morning, I come to check and you know what? I found surprise. You know, it doesn't work because in my mind, when I was sleeping, I didn't have a chance to check the signs. And one positive sign came up negative and the whole thing came down <laughs> in the crashing. In, wow. in now, now uh, 50 years later, I can uh, report to you guys that everything I cooked up, it does work, <laughs> you know, because I had so much knowledge that, and yeah, and I cook up some great, uh, some really crazy ideas. And that's what, what it takes now to go from, um, present state of the art, which is staying frozen in my mind for the last 50 years. I contributed my thing, but they didn't pick it up. So hopefully when I come with the new ones, maybe some people will listen and I'll be able to get get someplace with it. But yeah, in, 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 in on a patent, but that is that is a bad thing is as I mentioned, is patent system is broken and the government uh, should have two two things. Enforce the patent system to help uh, inventors uh, being able to fight against this, um, how do you say? Right. Um, Piracy. Yeah, that's right. And then also uh, stop uh, the uh, the, um, the um, monopoly of these few companies. <laughs> right. Which, uh, wait, the problem is this monopolies wait a huge capital and don't produce anything. And and they are just, uh, and they are used to uh, really uh, spend the money freely and don't use it usefully. So that's uh, that doesn't help uh, the country. And I'm, I'm afraid that pretty soon we won't become competitive with the rest of the world, especially Chinese and uh, Indians and uh, Russians and the rest of it, Europe and so on. In, in, uh, in put, put Biden, Biden or Trump in charge of patent office. What a crazy idea. <laughs> who, who is in charge? Biden, President Biden, or, or ex-President Trump, <laughs> just like in the Washington days. Oh, forget about it. <laughs> forget yeah, about that's, it. Uh, that's, that's, it's that's crazy. crazy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Doctor. I, I think uh, I think there is a possibility. Now that you mentioned that, I met uh, when you mentioned that. I uh, okay. I applaud actually. Uh, Elizabeth Warren was the first one who raised uh, a question that uh, all these. Uh, uh, Facebook, uh, Google, and uh, Amazon, and so they'd be broken out because they are, they are just, and look, they're controlling elections, you know, and Twitter is controlling Apple. elections, you know, the uh, control, uh, same thing with the Facebook, and what do they contribute? Nothing. And right. especially Google, you know, but anyway. Yeah. Dr. Chuck, yeah. the, uh, so the, the interesting part on, on my case was that, so I, I revised the uh, initial submission 
based on the reviewer criticism and asking for uh, changes. So the, my attorney and I made the changes, resubmitted again, and then I was again rejected. And then it says, uh, as a line item was like, uh, it is too abstract. So I called the reviewer on the phone from US, uh, on the US Patent Office, and I said, how is it abstract when I have a concrete results? When I implement my invention, uh, and I do construction project management, uh, where I combine a BIM, integrated design delivery solution, and, and a facility management solution, and the uh, latest technology and methodology, uh, which goes beyond anybody else offering in the world, I get a 20% savings on a construction project years after years. I said, how is that, how is that uh, uh, abstract? So I the answer advice. was, I can give you one abstract. I'm sorry? Listen. I'll give you one advice and uh, you take it with a grain of salt if you don't believe it. I believe that the US patent system is broken. Not only for that reason, they have in our field of power conversion, which is the biggest one, 20,000 examiners. Right. Uh, uh, these examiners are a reflection of the pool of what is happening in the power electronics field that I see today. You know, in the power electronics field, that's why I zero in on magnetics, they don't know, they all think, managers and uh, uh, all the uh, engineers, they'll think it's a transformer is a two windings on a magnetic core. You know, they don't have uh, any understanding. So how you can expect them to get your advanced technology approved? So the only way to do it now, the American system is now uh, uh, part of international uh, system and have to uh, oblige with the international system, which is now not 17 years from a time to submit, but it's 20 years from a time it is approved. And this is now motivated to get approval. Uh, and also when you apply now, I apply the US patent system a couple of years ago, they allowed you now to uh, same US patent office will process international applications, so-called uh, uh, PCT application, power, uh, 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 PTC, power uh, treaty uh, company, uh, countries, power treaty countries. And what it is, is uh, you are now submitting your patent internationally. It costs two times more or three. You don't have to pay translation and anything. It is done for internationally at the same time in US. And that way you can bypass your application in a sense, because what you'll find out you're spending a lot of time with your attorney and so on to trans to uh, convince some uh, people who are sitting there like a bureaucrats and all they uh, they feel they have a duty to reject the patents, you know. And if you go through this patent treaty uh, countries international, you get approval with international I think, which are much smarter. They are Europeans. They are. Uh, other countries which contribute. So uh, once you get a, a PCT approved, you can get a patent approved there and you don't really care if United <laughs> States uh, approve it or approve it late, or you can simply say, hey, PCT approved it, what the hell are your guys doing, you know? Can, so, you, can you consider to send me the, uh, the web link for that? Yeah, yeah, I, I will. Uh, okay, let's thank you. Well, we can get on a Zoom call, and uh, it'll be easier handling a one-on-one -on -one rather than two hundred. Yeah. Okay. I will. I will. I will communicate with you. Thank you very much. No problem. No problem. Thank you. Anyone else, uh, who remembers me from uh, four years ago? I had a couple of people who claim uh, who are my uh, uh, students who were going to join. I didn't see anybody. Um, Professor Chuk. Yes. Hi. <coughs> Hello. I didn't actually cross past paths. Oh, my, my video or my audio, my audio okay. sitting back. Now I have everybody. Okay, I have everybody. We are now on a gallery view. Anybody wants to talk? I'm here. Yeah. I'm here. <laughs> okay. okay, you asked the people that uh, had crossed paths with you. We didn't actually cross paths. Our paths were more tangent. Uh, when you were a grad student and then an associate professor at Caltech, who is, I was who is doing talking? my undergraduate who is, work. Who is talking to? Uh, this is John Brooks. What? Can you? Oh, John Brooks. Okay, go ahead. Yes. Hi. So we didn't cross paths actually, but when you were uh, 
a grad student and an associate professor at Caltech. I was doing my undergraduate work. And I yes. heard of your two converter very, very early on uh, because I was the roommate with Al Cocconi. Are you kidding? No, Are I'm you not kidding? kidding. That is, we were that roommates. is, that is beautiful to remember. You know what? Uh, let me put you on the screen because we can now only view. So say it again, and I will tell you uh, something about Alan Cocconi. I didn't know you were uh, his roommate. Yeah, we roomed together. Um, he was doing his mechanical engineering work at the time, uh, building tiny radio-controlled helicopters that were extremely acrobatic and all sorts of Listen, cool projects. You, I don't I know if you know. Electrical engineering. I don't know if you know, but uh, let me tell you this: Alan Cocconi was my uh, uh, how you say star uh, student. He was a master degree program uh, at Caltech in electrical engineering. I had yeah. him in my research group in power electronics that Professor Middlebrook and me were leading, and he was a member of that group. And then uh, he was just uh, just before uh, exam, there was exam in a differential equation. And Alan comes to me and says, uh, Dr. Chuk, I didn't study anything. I'm going to fail. In any case, I didn't like this uh, mathematics differential equation, and I, I won't want to quit. I don't want to work uh, anymore on a master's degree. And that's the time <laughs> when I started. That's the time when I started uh, my company at, uh, in uh, August uh, '97, whatever you know, '79, uh, uh, whatever 1977. I started yeah. my company, and I just said. Alan Kukoni became my first engineer. I admit yeah. it, he's the first engineer. He built for me this four kilowatt photovoltaic inverter for a Sandia laboratory. And then he wanted to do this solar uh, car in a race in uh, Australia. And he was hired by a, a Caltech guy who was uh, having a project to do solar uh, uh, powered uh, car. So they did a uh, race in Australia. And he Is that was the one the called one, Sunburner? Yes. And then uh, he was the one that uh, went to AeroWireman, where Creedy, McCready was in charge. And then he was always consultant. And later on, he said, Dr. Chuk, I never worked for any other company. Only for years, I was working as an employee. After that, I was my own consultant. So he then started his own company. Uh, in actually drove me in uh, his uh, Honda car, which was converted into the... Uh, you know, Honda Civic, it was a electric car, and drove me in the San Gabriel Mountains. And uh, and then uh, he, uh, he is the guy who designed the first uh, impact uh, uh, 300 miles range uh, electric vehicle for uh, General Motors. And, right. uh, and General Motors leased that for, uh, and, and very early in uh, the beginning, uh, they were only leasing 1,000 cars. And unfortunately, you can actually go on, uh, on the internet and buy this uh, uh, who killed the electric car because General Morris had it done and everything. In fact, General Morris offered him $2 million just to work exclusively for them. But you know, Alan, he never worked for anybody except for me. So so yeah. he wants to work in his uh, flying uh, cars, uh, flying uh, um, objects like uh, drones and so on. And then, uh, then uh, he d turned them down and started his own company and eventually uh, uh, his uh, patents that he had actually, I uh, encouraged him. He had uh, one patent that I uh, forced him to take it. Even I gave him some idea, and he did a beautiful. Went actually went uh, down to in a full bridge converters to to sense the flux, so you can okay. ensure it that uh, if it goes in one direction, you drive it with two transistors, and we go cross the transmission, use uh, uh, this sense to drive it in the other direction. So then you are at least uh, assured of uh, not saturation. But anyway, so he went uh, on uh, with his company, built a, he, uh, his uh, design was put, uh, put in the first Roadster. Uh, Martin Eberhardt started uh, this uh, Tesla motor company first before uh, um, Elon Musk. And then he licensed this technology uh, that he built a charger, he built a DC inverter, where the motor drive, everything, and he licensed it to uh, Eberhardt, to um, this company. Eventually, uh, when a roadster was built based on it, and they were paying him license uh, fees, and later when Elon Musk took over, you know what happened? Then he kicked out Eberhardt, and then they changed this original design from analog 
circuit to digital and claim that their patents are no longer valid because they use digital circuits into analog, but it's the same concept, <laughs> you know. So that's uh, that's how it always happened. Money wins, uh, uh, they get the claim uh, to fame, but the people, the real inventors, they they are forgotten down along the way, you know. So I'm glad you mentioned Alan because I think um, I had a good relationship with him uh, for quite a while. Mm -hmm. That kind of reminds me that I should actually, I should actually refresh my uh, contact. Do you still have uh, contacts with Alan or, or not? I, I think I have him on LinkedIn. I can send you that. Okay. All right. Well, he's still in San Gabriel Mountains and so on. I will. And anyway, if you do uh, get in touch with him, tell him that you're in my course, and then I has got some great stuff to to offer in the field. So he could <laughs> he could join the uh, join the party. You know. All right. But he was uh, really my favorite uh, first engineer for one thing, and uh, he was very brilliant. You know, a brilliant engineer. I, I appreciate his abilities. You know. Yeah, I know what you're saying about the inventors not really getting the uh, the credit that they deserve. I have over 40 patents and I've made you know maybe a couple thousand dollars off of all of them put together. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm glad you you made the. Uh, I'm just curious, how did you uh, learn about this course? Uh, did I uh, uh, through LinkedIn or what? What? How way did you learn about my? Uh, uh, I, I think it was originally through LinkedIn. Yeah. Uh, we're we're connected on LinkedIn, and I, I think I ended up getting an email announcement of the the one a couple you, weeks uh, ago, and uh, then this one. I have institute on LinkedIn. I have my power electronics institute, and I have also a one to one connection. You are probably connected to me through LinkedIn, right? Yeah, I believe so. Okay, well, send me the email. You you have now my email, so let's uh, touch base. We can talk on uh, uh, on uh, uh, Zoom uh, separately. Like I will talk to. Dr. Markovic as well. So, okay, so do. He will help you. We try to get, generate a computer um, a community of the smart people who want yeah. to do change in power electronics, right? Yeah. Dr. Chuk, thank you. I'm, I'm originally from Zemun, part of Belgrade now. Hi. Yeah, hi. I'm from Zemun. I came here on a student visa and I get my uh, bachelor degree from City College and then MBA in management from Fairly Dickinson and I get the doctorate from University of Phoenix and postdoctorate from Harvard. So I'm I'm in Upper Montclair, New Jersey, right outside of uh, New York City. A question. Do you know Slobodan Bibic? He was the uh, same gymnasium that you were in uh, Zemun. Slobodan uh, uh, Bibic. No, I know I, him very well. I graduated in 1967. And then I went to Belgrade uh, Mechanical Engineering University. Uh, so, uh, no, I, I don't know him, but I, I, I graduated from Mechanical Technical High School in, in Zemo. Oh, he's not elected. He's actually has his own photography business and he actually. Oh, yeah, he's, yeah he's, I know. Yeah. The, yeah. Oh, Dad Baby. Yeah, Dad oh, Baby. You know, know. You know his father, he has the only photographic shop in Zemo. Right. right. And he's the one that did my headshot for my passport. <laughs> So it's a small world, you see. Yeah, it, it is you know a small what? world. And there is a lot of people from Zemun that have done very well, like uh, Stevan Pauschak uh, has a doc, post, uh, doctorate from uh, MIT in physical chemistry. He lives in Canada. He's older than me. I used to cox for him in a gala on a rowing club in the Danube. And uh, he got his... Uh, uh, PhD from MIT, and and he had tremendous number of inventions. He lives in uh, outside of Toronto in Canada. He's from Zemun. Listen, I live, I live near Listen, Toronto. When we, are, when we are exchanging uh, uh, these uh, hunter stories, I I should tell you something about my and Yadranka generation. We were 1947 born, and we were first generation of electrical engineering, which had a full blown uh, exam. We got a uh, uh, exam. Entrance in, exam. Right. A, a mathematics exam. There were 1,300 uh, applicants, and first 300 were accepted uh, right. based on a, a score on the mathematics and physics uh, uh, exam. And then uh, next 200 were allowed to pay for it. First time that it was paid scholarship. And I should mention 
Yadranka and me were among the four students who were only four students who passed the math exam with over 45 points out of wow. Wow, yeah. that I when when I when I took the entrance exam in uh, mechanical engineering in Belgrade, uh, the entrance exam was for math, physics, and chemistry, and there was a twelve hundred applicants. They only took four hundred, uh, so it, it was not as as hard as in yours. But uh, you probably know uh, my uh, my brother's. Uh, Friend, a, my brother graduated uh, Zemun High School in uh, uh, 1960. Uh, I want to say 1963. Yeah. And on electrical engineering, uh, his his best friend was Atsa Furtola. Furt. So Furtola, I, uh, his wife, he passed away, but uh, Atsa's wife is my good friend and neighbor from Zemun. Right, right. So Atsa Furtula was, was from from uh, electrical engineering, uh, mm -hmm. and he 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 did a lot of different projects in the later years throughout the world. So, uh, but I, I I built a project in your neighborhood, Doctor uh, Chuk. Uh, I I did a joint venture years back with uh, uh, with the uh, company from uh, Laguna Niguel, Bir Bircha Construction. I did that high rise building in uh, Santa Ana, the, the tallest building. I built that from the uh, ground up. Wow. wow. Yeah, and I built the also uh, zero, all the Xerox centers throughout all North America. I built the Xerox center in uh, 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 in El Segundo outside of LX, and then also one in uh, Toronto. I did one, uh, a lot of development for Xerox in Virginia, and then also in Jamaica. So I did all, the, all those Xerox buildings uh, throughout North America. My, my husband worked in the Xerox building that looks like a spaceship in Mississauga. Uh, <laughs> yeah, very good. I did <laughs> one at the, at now, the now, I, I should add one thing. So this means I'm for the first time learning that the Zemun is this outskirt of Belgrade, one uh, uh, outskirt of Belgrade. It's a, you know, it's a town. Yeah. It's a town. It's a part of the Belgrade, but uh, but so, sort of. Uh, I didn't realize it had uh, so many bright and smart people. Oh yeah. The, uh, uh, Zemun is also known for its famous Zemun clan. Oh no uh, no no, we're not that. No no no. Thank you. No. <laughs> that was after. That was after us. <laughs> I know. I know. This is anything. Uh, when listen, you're right. Everything went downhill. When you left the United right. uh, uh, your Serbia, when uh, Yadranka left and me left, right. after that everything went down the hill. Right. When I was when I was growing up and going to school, that's where they were building uh, factories for uh, Zmai, for uh, uh, for um, uh, the uh, Itaem and all of this. And now it's nothing. They they they're down to zero. Nothing. They destroy the country. Yeah. Everything. You know what? I'm glad I left when I was 25 because I I wouldn't be able to live too long uh, and, and being frustrated. Uh, right. Something will happen health-wise or I will be sent to prison right. or something. You know, I couldn't stand uh, it. Now, now it's getting better. Now it's getting better. They have a tremendous uh, financing coming from uh, from the Arab uh, couple of rich people. If you look at the on uh, YouTube, the all of the new development Belgrade on the water, uh, it's it's unbelievable that that's all Arab money coming. Everything is you will not recognize it around. The, the, I'm afraid oh, we go for a visit. Yeah, I, I'm afraid that it's coming uh, with the wrong money. It's Saudi money and it's, uh, <laughs> it's uh, uh, and Chinese uh, money. Yeah, Chinese. Well, it's the Chinese, Chinese, Chinese money now the most. Uh, the all the infrastructure is financed by the Chinese money. Uh, and they're opening the factories and they're opening, it, it's, it's uh, the Chinese are now taking over. And I have a friend who is in Hungary, in, uh, uh, from Hungary. He said the same thing is happening in Hungary. So the Chinese are moving into Europe in a big, big time. Listen, uh, what China did uh, uh, in the last 20 years, uh, 30 years is amazing. Yep. I just look at the statistics. I was there 40 years ago. I was in their conferences when the uh, airport was, uh, 50 miles outside of the uh, of yeah. the Peking, and uh, and the Peking was a uh, uh, 
you know, little houses which were basically made out of mud, you know, there's no, no high skyscraper, nothing. You know, the uh, the cars were imported from uh, 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 Japan as a taxi cars, but everything was bicycles, you know. Yeah. And I looked at that uh, the, in the last 30 years, I look at a statistic, in the last 30 years, their gross national product went from something like, uh, uh, you know, 500 or 1,000 per year, it's now at 15,000, uh, 20,000, pushing to 25,000. It's like a 2,000 per year. And, and when you look at all these cities, you know, they came out of nowhere, you know, like a 100 story buildings, you know. But you I know was in Shenzhen originally when the Shenzhen was not part of China. Shenzhen was like that, but now the whole China is like Shenzhen. Right. But you know, the, the, I noticed when I visited a friend of mine in MIT when he was still there, uh, he, uh, they had a number of uh, Chinese students. And it turns out from the, the late 70s to early 80s, a lot of those Chinese that were studying there, they end up working in the United States for about five to 10 years and then went back to China. And then the government financed their companies. In addition, they foot up the money to bring whoever they wanted from United States that they knew that they met in college to bring them there to help them develop the industry. And that's where it all started back from the 70s and, and, and 80s. Yeah, that's, they're destroying uh, Intel. Absolutely. TSMC yeah. is now making a technology of seven, nano, seven nanoconies and, uh, and uh, Intel is staying at 14 nanoconies. Because they're yeah. so much behind, you know, and uh, uploaded. So, you know, I'm afraid for this country that this uh, monopoly that they have is easy money, easy go, and, and no products. And that yeah. uh, that is going to destroy the innovation. And they're, they're destroying innovation by not supporting this. Uh, as you say, uh, I feel sorry uh, that you get involved, with it, but I'm not surprised that this, uh, whoever you're dealing with to approve your patents, you know, it just uh, lost better go for international patents and then uh, forget about these Americans and then just, uh, you get Thank you, I will, I will do that. Yeah, I will uh, absolutely do that. Thank you very much for your advice. Yeah, okay, I'm, <laughs> I tell you. my daughters, I tell my daughters, there is no, uh, my middle daughter is an attorney and then for a while she worked as a, uh, in some patent lawsuit, Sprint versus someone else. And I'll tell you, look, I, I don't believe in a, a patent attorneys, I believe in myself being a best patent attorney because nobody can describe <laughs> the way I describe it. You know, so absolutely. <laughs> so you have to be best uh, businessman, best attorney, best everything, and still uh, it's questionable if you can survive against all these uh, people who are, you know, somehow abusing system. You know, and the system uh, is uh, really a disaster. I don't think uh, uh, if they don't change something drastically very soon, become uh, U.S. America is not going to be great again, but it's going to come uh, continue in this slide downwards, you know? Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. They need a big, big uh, change. That's all, you know, so that's, uh, okay. I said, uh, I have so far two people. One said, uh, I won't say his name, if you know, Chad, he's a great webinar. And another guy said, uh, uh, thank you for the wonderful presentation. And you know what, <laughs> you know, uh, I just share with you my my um, standard things. After I slaved and gave a five year uh, five days course in Europe, and um, Professor Milburg gave first five days, and I will follow with another five days. And when I finished five days to all the people, I said, "Look, I said if you like my course, tell everybody. And yeah. If you don't like, keep quiet." May I say a few words? Yes, go ahead. Okay, first, I'm happy to sign to those courses. I heard name Chuck Converter many, many years ago. I was surprised how it worked. It was Enigma for first, then I, I built it, then I found, oh, it's a reality. It's a step. Today, I got information that Slobodan Chuk replaced a helper in experiments Faraday many, many years ago with the transistor mm -hmm. and use capacitor to filter out AC component, which is excellent. Uh, and uh, uh, 
you told us very interesting about patent and, and uh, IEEE. It's exactly like happened with religion. Original definition, religion is uh, a group of people, church is a group of people that follow the same philosophy. It may be technical philosophy, but later what happened, it became an institution to get money. Yeah. This is one more proof. Yeah. And uh, I will recommend your lecture to my friend. Maybe somebody uh, is interested. I'm originally from Kiev Polytech. Uh, got PhD. Where? Kiev, Ukraine. Yeah. Ukraine. Kiev Polytech. I, yeah. I detect a slight Slavic accent, <laughs> <laughs> or uh, I would say not Slavic, but uh, but a uh, heavy Russian accent, right? Because we have the same thing. Careful, right? careful. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, it looks <laughs> like uh, fresh blood from Europe is feeding and keeping United States brains running. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But you know what? Uh, when I was at the uh, Yadranka will confirm with very electrical engineering, we studied mathematics. All our, uh, how you say, collection of uh, problems in mathematics were in Russian because they were 10 times cheaper than anything we had. And we were buying those and uh, learning from uh, textbooks and, uh, and Russians uh, uh, collection of the problems, you know, and uh, that was, uh, you know, the... the we have the, plenty of uh, and, and, intelligent and people, very, very intelligent people in the United States. But the problem is, like Professor Juke was saying, the decisions are made not by the intelligent people, exactly, by the money, but made money by the politicians. Exactly. E exactly. We had the joke that American University is a place where Russian professors are teaching Chinese students with mathematics. It yes. may reflect so something. Yeah. Okay, and uh, I hope next lectures will cover a lot. It's useful for me. I see I, I spent a lot of time uh, designing high frequency inverters and uh, transformer saturation. And okay. the way uh, how to use no, was very important. One announcement which is not clear. I wanted to really uh, make an effort that all the people, you know, there were 200 people who claimed they're going to join I think we got 60 or 70, that's okay. Uh, but uh, a couple of people asked me, uh, they couldn't come to the meeting, uh, they can get, can they get a, a recording of this? I did record the whole thing. And, but I told everybody, yes, if you attend my meeting, one award is you get a, this two and a half hours by now, or yeah, two oh, and a half hours. More. Oh, it's more, it's like a eight to eight to 11. It's three and a half hours. Yeah. So okay. you can charge you'll us. A, you'll get the recording of this three and a half hours. Why? Because I want you to be my messenger and to share mm -hmm. with your other people and say, <laughs> this is the place to go and learn. And uh, don't go to this university that will charge you $70,000 a year for four years. <laughs> right. And you won't uh, learn. Come to my course and in uh, uh, six weeks and one a month and a half, you're going to learn, I give you a certificate, and you say, I got a certificate, Professor Chu. And if that is not good to get your, your job, uh, send me the, uh, to uh, the, the guy that you took, uh, how you say? Um, interview. Interview, and I will, I will then uh, berate him and say, how come you didn't take my guy? You know, he knows everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. But there is opposite side, the Inquisition, scientific Inquisition. Oh, Professor Chuk recommended you probably have either too many brains. Yeah, that's right. Or you may yeah, be dangerous. qualified by being too smart. Because exactly. you're going to take right. his job. Probably Overqualified. Being, yeah, not only that. You're going to take his job. He's a manager and he doesn't know anything about technology and you start showing that you know all about it, then he automatically he's afraid of you. You're, you're taking exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Competition. Yeah. For money. When I was a manager. I loved to hire people that were better than me. At least oh, better but, in something. But uh, yeah. but this is real manager. The most people, most managers are thinking only in terms of money and career. And protection of their own job. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Yep. I enjoy when my schematic is working and show result. Great. This is when I'm happy. Other people, some other people enjoy, okay, 
I have to grow next few steps that I, I will be CEO. Okay, now I'll share one of uh, my experiences uh, and uh, related to the patent office. The patent office used to have in the first 50 years or so, they were demanding that you have a proof. You have to submit a prototype. And after first 20 years, they had to build three buildings to keep all these prototypes as a proof of the patent. So they avoided that uh, and there is no condition now you have to prove uh, with the prototype, with the, uh, you know, you just simply will. However, I had my own uh, habit for uh, 50 years. Each time I submitted a prototype, first when I was Caltech, I did it myself and with uh, some students. Uh, then when I was uh, in my company, I got my engineers who built the prototype. I would use the prototype, test it, and submit a testing result. However, uh, these times are gone. Now I have a much better way. I didn't have a chance to share it today, even though I have prepared it. I, I showed you this simulation only as a result of it. I got into the uh, learning about this different simulation program, zero in on one. I dramatically improved that uh, Plex program, which is now much better than they would, would have to offer because I have uh, my knowledge of state space averaging and I can avoid all these initial conditions which are uh, how you say arbitrary and and then you spend a lot of computation time uh, getting the wrong results and uh, and uh, have a, a, a problem of the how you say the uh, not uh, 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 not uh, uh, coming to the solution or coming to wrong solution uh, anyway uh, and uh, I now use that program with my enhancements uh to speed it up and make it accurate and uh, not uh, get bogged down in a uh, uh, non-existing solution and now i submit the patents where i just submit a result of my simulation because my simulation i believe more not only that it does two things for me when i have some new ideas if i uh, uh, test it with the simulation program and my uh, enhancement of it, very often I uh, happen to improve it. If I get into some situation where it doesn't work as I expected, that is my tool. I'm using that program like a, a hammer, you know, like a tool to uh, come to the solution. And then eventually use it as a something that I submit, which is independent of a particular device, independent this transistor, that transistor, that diode, that magnetics and so on. Just to me, that is the best proof there is. That means certainly anybody can do that and uh, repeat what I did. And uh, you don't need to store it with a patent office. They wouldn't allow you. But that is to me the best proof. You know that, and it helped me as a tool and it helped me as a also to write a patents and make it clean. And uh, just to, one thing that people said about patents, I enjoy writing the patents because there is nothing like when you have to put it down on a paper. Right. Then you have to review it and find out is this everything said or if it's not, come back to it and add more to it and uh, improve and so on. So the, uh, to me, uh, uh, so many people complimented me that they said they looked at some of my patents and, and each time reading it third or fourth time, they find a few more things that they missed first time. And it is actually uh, at one point I'm even thinking to put all my patents that I have submitted as a collection, like a 300, 400 pages uh, printed book, because that's something that you don't have to collect and you can have it and you have fingerprints to learn. It's a it's a learning tool, you know, and, and of course what I wrote 10 years ago and what I'm writing now, it's a, it's a different level, but never, nevertheless, it is a teaching tool. You know, and, yeah, and, and great, I love yeah. to write. Uh, I love to write a textbook because uh, I think I came to the point that I now finally, as I said before, not because of trying to uh, uh, brag about myself and so on, but uh, there is one thing about human mind. When you uh, focus in uh, on one field and constantly you learn more and more, you are more looking at it. You see more things you didn't see before. And sometimes I look myself and I said, how come I didn't see that 20 years ago? But it yeah. takes the time. It takes the knowledge to get to that level that you can really fully understand. Okay. Very good. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. It was very Thank informative. Very, much. Was very good. Thank you. Yeah. Good. Bye-bye. All right. 
I'll be in touch with you, Dr. Chuk. Very good. Uh, you have, feel free to contact me. You have all my connections now with the email addresses and uh, several of them and uh, Zoom. Uh, we can get on a Zoom and uh, let's keep in touch and let's get uh, uh, join join the revolution. I think we are really in a, uh, in a big thing. I think uh, big things will happen in next 20 years and I don't think we have to wait till uh, next century 20 years, but we can do it in, the, in this, this 20 years. While Very we're good. up. Okay. Thank you very much. Cheers. Right, Could I ask you one question before you end? Okay. What? Who is calling? Uh, uh, I am uh, Sujan Lale from uh, Sarajevo, Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, I'm, I have uh, one uh, question regarding your presentation. Uh, uh, from your perspective, uh, how do you see the research field of control methods? Uh, control structures uh, in power electronics converters. Uh, is there uh, okay. space for, for some real improvements uh, or uh, are there some things uh, which are doing wrong in that field, not only in the field of uh, technologies uh, or okay. switching? Okay, thanks for that question because I have a very, very specific answer. When I started and I mentioned today, when I started my field, I, uh, this field, I uh, started in a control system. Last two years in electrical engineering in Bergen, I was supposed to be a system professor in control systems. And uh, I had a good background in a control system because I was, uh, I was going to do nuclear engineering and control nuclear reactors and all that stuff. When I came to the United States, I did my master's in control system, state space and so on. Uh, classical Kalman and Bellman and all this uh, state space theory. And that helped me when I came to Caltech to come up with a method of a linear system of state space. I actually adopted it and to make general method of space, uh, space, state space averaging, which was half of my PhD thesis. And I did also invent this, uh, you know, the converter along the way, which uh, essentially motivated me to come up with the state space averaging because we had all state capacitors inductor. However, and I, uh, use that and develop the program, which uh, is, uh, we call it the stamp and zone, which you can use to uh, uh, basically uh, design your con feedback control systems and all that. However, my latest is, and un unfortunately what happened with this whole field, uh, engineers don't like something which is a little bit more sophisticated to learn. So they just dropped learning my state space averaging and there are a bunch of people, including my one of my own uh, uh, PhD students who are peddling, uh, I must say that, who are peddling the shortcuts, the no shortcut. There's only one method which I covered in my PhD thesis uh, 45 years ago, which is um, April 1st, 19th, uh, 1970s, no, in 1976, when I published my PhD thesis, which is really correct method. All the rest of the shortcuts is exactly what? Shortcuts which have don't solve any problem and the engineers love it now because they think they got the results. They got the wrong results, that's a problem. But now the question comes to the feedback. And I have my own very much, uh, uh, how you say, uh, feeling that I developed recently about the feedback control systems. It was great in a good old days when we were at 80% efficiency, when uh, uh, you had to operate over a wide range of different conditions, you know, with like uh, uh, different voltages, different load condition, and then converter goes in the different mode of operation. One is, uh, how you say, uh, discontinuous conduction mode, conversion changes, then you have to have a feedback. However, I will point out to you one thing, which I came out with the conclusion. Uh, the, it is my state space averaging is great to give you now steady state conditions, which you can use to uh, analytically to calculate, to use as initial condition for simulation program. That's a great tool to speed up simulation program. Do I need a feedback control? Well, one thing what feedback control does is limit your bandwidth. You understand? So if you are uh, uh, trying to uh, get the converter, like I showed you today, uh, with the demonstration, which will change current 
from 100 amps to 10 amps and back to 100 amps very quickly, uh, your feedback is a limiting factor because if you close the feedback loop, the best you can hope is a bandwidth of 10% of the switching frequency. So if you're switching at 100 kilohertz, your bandwidth is 10 kilohertz. However, if you open an open loop, then your bandwidth is 100%. You don't have a limitation on it. I'll give you, and you don't have a problem of stability because once you have a feedback, you have a problem of stability and a problem of transient response and all that. All of that goes, goes out of the water on the condition that if you can make your converter. And that's what I did with my uh, Chuk Bak 2 converter I demonstrated today. Uh, you can go and have a converter which is 99% efficient, efficient. You don't need a feedback control. Uh, especially because if you are converter, like I showed you for this converter, it never goes into discontinuous conduction mode. Operates at uh, continuous conduction from uh, no load to full load. Not only that, you don't need a, a constraint on the uh, feed. Uh, are, are we he hearing anyone? Uh, Hello? Yes? Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I lost the connection for a while, but maybe maybe I can uh, help uh, to look from the different perspective and respond to our colleague Surjan. Yes. It's, Go ahead. Um, I was working in in the nuclear industry, and we did um, control automatic control of about everything. So uh, automation and feedback loop and control was very important to do everything in, in uh, controlling the reactors, uh, automatic change of fuel, uh, you name it. It was all done, including simulation, announcement, and in, in providing information to the operator. So I think it's a great future in, in what you were asking about the, whether there is a, a, a future in control. Of course it is, it's all becoming a, uh, feel it in control. Okay, uh, I'll tell you uh, now. You can hear my finish uh, finishing part. I think uh, the what is happening now uh, in my system. It's uh, of course uh, uh, nuclear reactors is a much more complicated beast, and uh, you have to make sure that you don't have a, like what happened that uh, uh, they're controlling it. Like at one point they had a contamination, and the reactor went out of the things because they're dependent on. Uh, plotter and plotter didn't show that there's critical mass and all that kind of stuff. But in my field is similar what, you know what happened with the, uh, with the, uh, I, that, I use that as a uh, as example, uh, this uh, uh, American program with this uh, previous, uh, uh, they remind me of the second, uh, that they take off as a aircraft and land as, a, as an aircraft, right? So they yeah, take the off shuttle, the rocket, shuttle program? Space shuttle. Space shuttle. The space shuttle uh, went, and a space shuttle never had a uh, feedback used in the control system, never. And why? Because the feedback has a one problem, and that is when you have, a, I say, you can, under certain conditions, you can get a stability problem, and you cannot, uh, and when it's an unstable, you don't want to be there because an aircraft crashes. And they operate with a, a modern computers. They operated as an open loop system. They had a very powerful, uh, not original space program at Apollo, but with the space shuttle, they had computers, they had wind tunnels, and in the wind tunnels, they were simulating all external conditions, which means uh, wind this way, wind that way, and the other condition, this and so on. And when they're landing, you know how they're landing? They're landing, controlling, they're breaking down uh, by changing the pitch of the aircraft. and. And, and then they had all these tiles below to take all that temperature and they were increasing the pitch, they were uh, breaking uh, effectively and eventually at the end they're landing. They're controlling that pitch and all that and it was all control open loop. You know, open loop because they wouldn't get in, first of all, you had a fast response and as uh, fast as you can because you don't have a closed loop uh, limitation of your feedback. And the second uh, you have, uh, how to say, uh, no uh, 
stability problems and get out of hand. Now, what I found out, if you look at this article that I published, and I'll post it up uh, for, for those who send up, come to the course, uh, of course, uh, you'll find out when I get to 99% efficiency, and when I don't have a change of operation or mode of operation, I operate the system open loop. And that means that, uh, and that is where I'm going now. I, I, uh, I can make a number of conver converters, uh, new converters where I have a high efficiency over 99%. You don't need, a, you're re you really needed a, a re feedback because there is sudden change of mode of operation from uh, light load to full load, completely different uh, conversion function. And you need to get a system as fast and you need to get it out of the, out the, out of the uh, stability problems. So yes, uh, I, at one point I was uh, there who uh, generated the original state space averaging method and program that can use to design uh, feedback. But now more or less I see it, uh, reality is that uh, you're better off without feedback, you know, if you can do it. But for that, you need high efficiency, you need uh, no change of operation. And to get a high efficiency, uh, there is another another thing which I, I must say it's, uh, it's interesting. If you want to close up, you know, from my long time experience in this field in the control system, so I can share that with you. You know what's the problem with the classical uh, feedback control? You have uh, these bad inductors and capacitors, and they create the second order filter. Second order filter is uh, having high Q. And uh, the, if the filter is 100% efficient, no resistances, the Q is 50 or 100. And if you do make a simulation of it, you will have that this, if, if you want to make a system to regulate uh, and you want to make it a very efficient, when you have a closed loop, you're facing the problem that you have your uh, loop gain transfer function has these spikes at the moment, the more efficient you are, the higher Q and the higher the problem is uh, for you to close the feedback loop because they are uh, along the way. You see what I'm saying? So if yeah. you're open loop, you don't care what the Q is, you know, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, and you can do a, a still regulation. And what I what I do uh, feel, uh, still what we need is a regulation against a sudden change. So I keep this way open loop as far as a, a load change. But what about input voltage? Input voltage changes suddenly or 50 volts to 100 volts or the other way around or whatever. You know what? There is a simple classical system that you control the slope of the ramp. So, and you make a slope of the ramp which is used comparison and uh, duty ratio, you control it with the input voltage. So input voltage changes 100%, doesn't matter. In single cycle, you get a, a regulation against input voltage, but this is feed forward, it's not feedback. So you have a feed forward and you have this and you're done. You know, but the only problem is you have to make converter very efficient and very small and so on. And as I explained, you know, the uh, we are getting now with this new kind of magnetics, as I said, if you go and make magnetic smaller, that means my inductances will have be shorter and my inductance will have less copper losses. So therefore there's no damping. So the whole system, when it's becoming 100%, say theoretically 99.9% .9 efficient, there's no damping. And if you have no bending, you have a horrendous problem to control it. So why okay. bother? Bodan, I will have to interrupt you again. I think there Thanks. is room for everything. Okay. feedback and and redundancy and this is what nuclear industry and avio industry depends a lot on and this is redundancy of the uh, different loops and then you pull the loops and <coughs> check before and after what is it so that you can that computers can make a decision about the controlling or control or whichever way it is there is a room for everything you simulate no, no, I'm, not, I'm not saying redundancy, that you you do also not only redundancy you use parts of a different manufacturer that's exactly what is being done in nuclear industry and the avian industry which are probably the most advanced in a in a control well, control I, I agree with all of what you said because you are dealing with a much complicated beast. Here we're dealing with a simple beast, which is a converter, okay? And then okay. what I'm saying is, uh, if I can control it uh, now and uh, uh, under conditions that our objective is 
to get as high uh, as an as close to 100% efficiency, where you will have all the problems with this uh, dynamics and uh, and uh, cues of the filter and so on. And in fact, you know what I, I'm avoiding that now because I, I'm not using those inductors. I'm using in different ways, you know. So eliminating those inductors. But uh, and in fact, uh, uh, the whole point I'm doing now is. Uh, eliminating inductors as per se, and using everything with an AC, treating this to DC converter as a system which has an AC transformer in it, and hopefully uh, eliminate everything else which uh, limits the uh, power, uh, spinning power and all that, okay? All right, so um, anyway, it was uh, interesting. I think we could, I know we could stay another <laughs> four hours as far as I'm concerned, but I'm sure you have a, a husband and, uh, and uh, wives to uh, go back to they get back uh, mad at me and i don't want them to be mad at me i want you to uh come to the next course. okay it's all on the distance learning so don't worry about it <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, well you know if i have to worry about each of your uh personal situation i've been in trouble but so i'll try not to worry about any single one that's your internal internal situation <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, thank you very much once again. Okay. Thanks a million. Thank and you very much. To the so let's see if everybody's there and uh, everybody is happy. Andreas, uh, Kostin. Yeah, I see some of you, but most of you are hiding. Oh, okay. uh, here, he's my better half. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Okay. What about Zoran? Was Zoran here? Yeah. Yeah. He of was. I was there all the time. But he's okay. Getting okay. It's okay. Oh, there. We're getting ready for listen, the listen, hold on. Show up at least for a second. Okay. All right. Now you can you can show up now. And uh, I mentioned you and your brother and and. Uh, yeah, I've, heard, I've heard. I was there all the time. And, and I, I was I, I was uh, hoping you're going to show up and say, yeah, that was my brother. But uh, but you know, <laughs> you know, it's. Uh, it's well, we don't want to show this whole thing as as, as a family loop. <laughs> no, I know, I know the women have a problem, but as I told everybody, if you come to my Zoom talk, uh, it's a surprise to some of them. I look at 20 years younger. You know why? Not only that I shape, but also I put this uh, uh, this Zoom has ability to put it on a facelift, so you get a free facelift. So I look 20 years younger. Only why did you tell me it. that? Okay, that's why I'm <laughs> <Okay. laughs> So don't worry, uh, you just have to use uh, uh, Zoom properly so women don't have to worry about the makeup and all that. You look better than ever, you know, on a Zoom. So so there's no problem. And some people like Andrew Schaber is young and has a big bushy hair, so he doesn't have to uh, be. Uh, <laughs> doesn't have to be. Uh, need you don't need a facelift, okay? But okay. Once you get, listen. Once again, uh, Andrews, bye. Once you get, once you get to my uh, uh, my age, you are going to get your eyes. You're going to replace the cataract surgery. We replace your eyes, and you won't need any more. Um, uh, glasses. I uh, have my glasses for 40 years, uh, 50 years, uh, because of astigmatism. And now, when I get cataract surgery, I drive and watch TV and do everything with no glasses. It's wonderful, you know. The medicine is wonderful. And uh, so you, I told my daughters, some of them inherited my things, and they're still having glasses. I said, just get that surgery and <laughs> get rid of <all> glasses. <laughs> okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay. Bye. Say everybody, take care. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Dr. Chuk, uh, Dr. Chuk, can you stay just for a second? Yes. Mm, Drajna here. Drajna here. Yes. Okay. Uh, your next your your next course is it starting, you know. My next course, I'll send you, it's a delay, uh, it's po uh, delayed uh, rescheduled to May 3rd uh, because I had this uh, 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 management problem uh, which happened at the last minute. So I had to delay this uh, for two weeks, my um, uh, webinar, and then uh, I delayed the course for uh, uh, beginning of May, which will fit in my schedule. So I can still do it by middle of uh, June. So it'll be six weeks starting May 3rd, which is Monday. Okay. You get it?
thanks it? a lot. Yes, th thanks a lot. And hopefully sometime we can talk about uh, Supermicro and your email, <laughs> which you oh, sent oh, to me. Oh, okay. okay. All right. <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, I will now publicly ask you a question. Did you learn uh, <laughs> that uh, actually Google had this uh, presentation at uh, Virginia Polytechnic uh, Conference? Is that correct? Uh, yeah, I did not know about that. Okay, so. Okay, let's talk separately on it. Yeah. Exactly. Yes, thank I you. I want <laughs> to learn how did they uh, manage to go from 12 buck converters with a simple <laughs> inductor to 12 transformers, you know, that is going from one disaster to another, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can talk about that. Yeah, okay. So, about that. okay. Bye bye, everyone. Okay, and uh, uh, I didn't have a chance to uh, didn't have a chance. Yeah. But remember, when I finish my online course, uh, go online, go now on uh, YouTube and find uh, the tune, which is called "We Are the World." It's a three minutes and a half, uh, the famous song uh, played by the forty uh, whatever uh, singers at the time. And I pronounce this to be anthem, anthem for a power electronics. Uh, um, how do I say, a celebrating a, a power electronics uh, revolution. Okay, so uh, instead of playing it for everybody, just go to it, and uh, um, I may actually upload it on it. There was interesting uh, uh, tune how it was built. It was. Uh, uh, I was going to share it with you, but I will share it now. I'll make you link when I send to everybody. Everybody is going to get a link to this uh, pre uh, presentation and uh, also link to uh, all these uh, PowerPoint uh, things that I used. And at the same time, I will send you the link. Uh, it was one hour, uh, which was made by Jane Fonda as a narrator, but uh, how they made it. It was made in one day and one night by all these 40 singers coming from all over the world. And you know what it was, how it was organized? The organizer, have you ever heard for a singer named Harry Belafonte? Harry Belafonte uh, organized all these singers, invited them to come and make this song with the Michael Jackson and uh, uh, Rich, uh, whatever, uh, uh, Richie or, or whatever is singer. And in the middle of that uh, uh, trial, they spent a the whole night in the morning, in the middle of the trial, uh, my famous uh, singer, you know, what was this, uh, not Harry Belafonte, but uh, was also uh, great. He started the song of Harry Belafonte and everybody uh, uh, followed up. And it was uh, one of these famous songs of Harry Belafonte. Harry Belafonte, is, by the way, is still uh, the alive, like 90, 90 years plus. And the other singer died, you know, but he was, uh, but remind me, uh, the very, uh, not Fetch Domino, but uh, what was this other one? Uh, at the moment. Uh, so he started singing and everybody accepted it. And it was fantastic because all these famous singers, they uh, did a tribute to Harry Belafonte because he organized this whole thing. You know, he and he put the money behind it or whatever. And uh, it was it was just wonderful uh, feeling is that, uh, that the world united in this uh, uh, Africa, you know, we are the world, you know, and and I think uh, we need uh, something in in this field that the people rebel and uh, stop this uh, downward spiral of power electronics, which I think it's a. Uh, I feel the next 20 years in power electronics will be critical. Either they're going to go and did the same thing for last 20 years, or we are going to do make uh, make a major breakthrough. And I hope to be part of it, and I hope to, you will join to it as well. You know, so. Really, uh, thanks uh, for uh, coming to the course. And as I said, if you like the course, spread the word. If you didn't like it, be quiet. Okay, so, <laughs> all right. Thanks a million guys. And, uh, very good, okay.